Welcome back, Roller Derby fans, to the 2015 U-Haul Brawl. I'm the Derby Nerd. I'm Pink Slaminade. Oh, wait, I'm Pink Slaminade. I know, we were going to do that oh, thing. I blew it already. All right, let's start let's again. Let's start again. No one was listening. Welcome back, everyone, to the 2015 U-Haul Brawl. I'm Pink Slaminade. I'm the Derby Nerd. That's better. No rules. <laughs> no rules. You are watching Team U-Haul and Plaid Mafia, the second game of this 2015 Pride-affiliated Derby event, and we are underway. Sin picks up the first lead jammer status for Team U-Haul. These girls are too fast for the scoreboard. Finally counting down now. Jamming for the Plaid Mafia and being recycled to the back. Skater normally known as Lexicon. Today she's playing as Voss the Boss. Little Orange is the new black shout out. But it's Sin picking up all the points here early on. A grand slam for the Queen City Roller Derby skater in the uh, orange. Team U-Haul. I guess the home team here at the U-Haul Brawl. I suppose so. The, the team for which this uh, bout is being named this year. Team U-Haul first on the board with seven points total once we get those uh, tallied up. Some interesting uh, roster notes tonight that we're seeing the return of Tunderkunt mm. to the track. Yes. Known formerly as Betty Bomber, a retired skater from Toronto Roller Derby, Roller Derby longtime member of CN Power and the Death Track Dolls in that league. She's the captain of the U-Haul Brawl in Orange, captain of the Plaid Mafia's Queen Laquifa, otherwise known as Kay Skelton from Tri-City Roller Derby, Waterloo, Ontario. Jamming right now for the U-Haul Brawl, Le it's Petit La Petit Mort. Known as La Grand Noisseur in uh, her home league in Montreal. She's looking for instruction from her bench. Skated in the intermediate game last year and was really one of the breakout stars of that game and has advanced to the advanced level this year. Nice hit out though from Rosemary's Rabies, skating as not Rosemary's Rabies. A uh, Galeycopter. Littlest homo. Oh Sorry. no, she's wearing number one. Well, it might have been, yes, Galeycopter and uh, Littlest Homo working together on that one. Galeycopter known as Titmouse, who was formerly known as Helicopter. Gets yes. confusing here with all of the the artist, names. the artist formerly known as <laughs> Titmouse, formerly known as Helicopter, exactly. at the event formerly known as Clam Slam. That's right. I was formerly known as Pink Slam today, but for tonight I'm the Derby. Nerd. That's right, and I am Peace Slam. Keep up, kids. I prefer Peace Slam. Pay attention. Yes, Peace yeah. Slam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Vigilionaire, though, you just saw her jamming. She's doing back-to-back -back duty tonight, as we try to fill out these rosters. And now Tinderkunt, last line of defense, cannot hold Vigilionaire down. Lead jammer status for the Plaid Mafia. Jamming here is uh, smashing good time from Hammer City. It looks like she's smashing good Tim tonight. See the back of that jersey or maybe, no, smashing good, good time. time. Skating by her regular name, number 519. She reaches the back of the pack, but the Plaid Mafia calls it off. Some debutantes at the U-Haul Brawl. Susie Slamher skates as Susie Sculper for her home lead. This is her first U-Haul brawl. Skates from uh, in South Simcoe Rebel Rollers. Uh, Igwe, too, a recent transfer from London Roller Girls. Skates now for Toronto Roller to be CN Power. She's also making her debut here at the Clam Slam. Plaid, yep. sir, Plaid Mafia making their debut on the scoreboard. That's right. Finally racking up one point in that last jam. And two uh, Tri-City jammers now going at it here on the line, and it looks like it's going to be Skelton. Queen Laquifia is <laughs> at the front of the pack working with Dinah Squircha. Annex getting knocked out by Getcha Kinks, and lead jammer status does go to the Plaid Mafia. And Queen Laquifa. Quite a, it's quite a <laughs> mouthful. <laughs> it is. Dinah Squircha back on the track and working one-on-one -on -one against Laquifa right now. Finally, Laquifa gets through, calls it off after picking up all five. Annex had just completed her initial pass. Dinah Scorcha, a former popular skater here in Toronto, now skates for Montreal Roller Derby. Known as Dinah Hurcha in those parts. She's probably going to hurt you tonight either way. Yes. Scorcha will hurt you. Mm -hmm. Dana Skullcrusher on the line from Niagara Roller Girls for the Plot Mafia. Looks like number 1666 Sin from the Queen City Roller Girls, also known as Incinerator, jamming for the U-Haul, Team U-Haul. She got lead jammer status in her first jam and working now against Fracture 101, Littlest Homo, also, oh, that's a great name, uh, also getting involved in the defense. Nice work, though, from Sin to get through as your lead jammer. 
Much faster pack you're seeing here than in the first bout. Seeing a lot of blocker on blocker action right now as the Jammers sprint back for their scoring pass. Nice fast pack from Plod Mafia will limit the damage. Just one point on the board for Sin. Nonetheless, U-Haul increasing their lead as we near the five minute mark of this opening half. We're playing full regulation WFTDA bout, 30 minute halves. Three timeouts each, seven penalties will have you fouled out of this game. La Patimor up against Virgilionaire on the jammer line. Two very strong jammers. Very clean start to this one. Five on five roller derby, a couple jams in. Five, fifth jam in. And very experienced front line from the Mafia lock things up right off the start. Dinah Scorcha and iHeart Butts trying to get to Vigilionaire. Couldn't quite do it. Lead jammer status once again for the Mafia. And we now have a sprint to the pack. Two very fast jammers. And with the team U-Haul in the back, it's going to work out well for Vigilionaire. Oh, unless she falls down. No points as she was coming to the inside. A nice rock star finish on that one. Zero, zero jam. Now coming up to the jam line, smashing good time once again out there for Team U-Haul. And it is... Clitty Smalls boss. taking... Oh, the boss. yeah, Voss Sorry. the boss. Clitty Smalls taking the front with Fracture. Uh, the artist formerly known as Lady Gaga, known as today as Jildo. Again, a very strong blocking line for Plaid Mafia right here. And Lady Gaga also now, <laughs> just to add to the confusion, skates yes. as Jill Amal now for the Gorgo Roller Girls. Of course she does, Toronto why not? Roller Derby. Yeah, you know, Lady Gaga has her CN Power name. Smashing Good Time is your lead jammer from Hammer City skating tonight on Team U-Haul. We had a panty stash, but now it is back on the helmet of number 25, Voss the Boss. Fracture with a big hit at the end of that jam forces. Smashing Good Time out of bounds, but not before she picked up four points. Team U-Haul increases the lead now, 14-6. Very low scoring game so far. Strong blocking lines in this uh, advanced level bout here yeah. at uh, U-Haul Brawl. Yeah, this is the third year we've had the uh, divided bouts for the doubleheader. It used to be just a single game affair. But it became too popular. Yes, that's right. Much too popular, and there was always a long waiting list. And this is also the third year that it's been uh, a combined event between the GTA Roller Girls and Toronto Roller Derby. Quick lead jammer status goes to number one of the Plaid Mafia, that's Gailey Copter, being hotly pursued by Annex from Tri-City, playing on the Team U-Haul. <laughs> Gailey Copter just staying a few strides ahead, tries to get that lone U-Haul point, does get it. Nice work from the crafty veteran. Very nice burst of speed there at the end, just kind of leaps through that wall. Very, very smart jammer. Um, yeah, she had in the semifinals this year, I believe it was, she had seven stolen points um, just from picking off those final blockers. And that's all on no uh, lead jammer status. She had seven stolen points. She's a sneaky one. Yeah. Clever girl. Vigilionaire. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there, nerd. It's all right. Peace, <laughs> Lamb. It's all right. Getcha Kinks. No, no, sorry. That is Sin. Looks a little bit like Getcha Kinks. Except she's wearing a different color. <laughs> yeah, wrong team. I'd like to see them up against each other. Right now, she's up against Vigilionaire. Recycled to the back, yet to complete her initial pass. Almost forced a cut there by Tara Part. She enters in legally. Sin working on her points. Oh. Almost knocked out by Fracture, but she makes it around a five-point natural Grand Slam. A wonderful game here early on for the Queen City skater. Sin as Igwe heads to the penalty box. Pack advantage now for Team U-Haul. Pachillionaire having a hard time looking for some help from her blockers. Yeah, no pivot on the track. Oh yes, Fracture is there to pass. And it looks like Vigilionaire is going to get called on that momentum cut. Power jam opportunity for Team U-Haul. Just a whisper of a wheel outside the track. It's enough to force a cut penalty on her. And a huge hit from oh. Fracture against Sin on the outside of the straightaway. Nice setup there from Lose Your Pants. Back skating with Toronto Roller Derby this season. And okay. it's one-on-one -on -one action between Sin and Fracture. Lose Your Pants joining her at the front. They're just at the edge of the engagement zone there until uh, Team U-Haul caught up. They're going to call that jam with another four points. Team U-Haul stretching into the lead now. 
Nice defense, though, from Plaid Mafia to limit the damage once that became a power jam. So fear me heading to the penalty box for Team U-Haul, so they'll be down to three. Bajillionaire yet to stand in the sin bin. That means uh, La Patimo is going to have a little bit of time in order to cinch Lee Jammer's status. Cody Small's little homo and uh, Jildo <laughs> working the defense. And oh, nice. and jumps <laughs> over Cliddy Smalls' hip to get lead jammer for Team U-Haul. Now Team Moore coming in on her scoring pass. Nice work from, that's not Nash of the Smasher, even though she is wearing number two by four. That is uh, Oliver Klozoff. Bajillionaire back on the track. Bajillionaire just narrowly missed getting hit out by iHeart Butts. Finally completes her scoring pass. La Petitmore calls the jam with four more points on the board for Team U-Haul. A nine-point jam for them. 30 points lead over the Plaid Mafia. But if you watch the earlier game, you know that a 30-point lead is not one to rest on. It means uh, nothing. It means nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. There was a... Uh, the last game, the Blundstone Brigade was down by 21 points going into the final jam. One by two. Exactly. No problem. No problems. There are no rules. Exactly. It's the U-Haul brawl. Smashing good time on the line. Skating up against Queen Laquifa again. Cut track on oh. Queen Laquifa means it's a power jam for Team U-Haul, and they get lead jammer status. Going to need a big penalty kill here for Plaid Mafia this game. Getting a little bit ahead away from them early on in the first half. <laughs> and Tundercon heading right to the penalty box. Didn't even need to wait for the number on a back block. She knows what she did. Yeah. But she did open up that line for five points. Hashtag worth it. <laughs> here comes Smashing Good Time. Looking for some help from her friends. Still getting caught behind a uh, Plaid Mafia wall. It's full dick and uh, Gailey Copter in... Uh, Get your kinks, work in the defense. Slowly she's trying to push them out of play. She picks up another five point grand slam. Queen Laquifa finally makes it out, completes her initial pass. Nice re entry there for Laquifa. Skates for the Tri City Thunder, Kitchener Waterloo. And Niagara is smashing good time, calls it off in the middle of the pack, pick three points on the board. U-Haul brawl now up 40, 50 to seven. 40, 50. 40, 50. <laughs> you know, we're not here to do math. No. We're here to drink beer and watch roller derby. That's right, announcer math is bad enough. No. We are here to make a shout out to Nick and Knitter. Yeah. Sewing, knitting. Yeah. That's, that's just what they're about. That's what the, exactly what they're about. They're about sewing, also knitting. And back on the track, it is Voss the Boss. Once again, number 25 in the blue, working a three wall of skaters at the front of the pack through as your lead jammer. NX. NX going up against a triangle formation from Plaid Mafia and trying to get rid of that star. Passing it out to Dinah Squircha, who ends up at oh. the back of the pack. Yeah. So NX thinks maybe not. Nice work from Igwe there, forcing the pivot to the back of the pack. And NX is through, though, on her initial pass. Voss, five points on the board. An important five for the Plaid Mafia. Hits it, quits it. No more on that second pass. And we should also take some time to thank Pinups by Gracie. Ladies and gentlemen, Gracie, Klitz, and Svetlana Consuelo. Together they are Circle K. These savvy showgirls offer a range of creative creations, including... Hashtag pinups by Gracie, bow ties, bedazzled toques, sparkle sunnies, and so much more. I have no idea what sparkle sunnies are. Uh, yeah, but you lost me after sparkle. Like, if it's yes. sparkle, I'm in. And I mean, sunny. We got some sparkly shorts here from La Petite More on the uh, uh, Team U-Haul. Looks like an official review being called. The bench staff for this game um, is Loose Knuckles and Jose Cuervo for the Plod Mafia. That is um, Moose Knuckles. And uh, Hoser, Panty Hoser, for those keeping track at home. And on the bench for the Team U-Haul. Team U-Haul, we've got, uh, again, Gayonce, normally known as Nasher the Smasher, Heavy Petter, a heavy knitter, and Genghis Cunt, uh, also known as Beaver Mansbridge, all three of them from Toronto Roller Derby. 
Yeah, so uh, experienced skaters, not a lot of bench experience, though, once again, which always, I think, makes for interesting play as well. Yes. Uh, when you have an inexperienced bench. Um, yeah. Penny Hoser, though, has been the bench manager for um, the Death Track Dolls in Toronto Roller Derby for the past few seasons, leading them to two championships along the way. So she does have some experience. She's got some, some stuff under her belt. Talked about the, a little bit of the history of this event. I want a, a shout out to one skater who couldn't be this, here this year, but I believe who's been at every previous event. Um, and that is Nameless Horror, Montreal Roller Derby. Unfortunately, off skates currently. Uh, unable to skate as she uh, deals with an ailment, but uh, we're missing her certainly at the U-Haul Brawl this year. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully she'll be back healthy as ever next year. Let's give a shout out to Badass Button Training. Badass Button Fitness and USANA supplements will help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Visit Lita May, competitive boxer and trainer, for more info. Or you could come down and visit us here yeah. at Ted Reeve Arena. That's right. Still we lots of time. What are you doing at home? What is more important than this? Yeah. Uh, nothing. There Absolutely couldn't be anything. Nothing. It's Pride Week here in Toronto, and I took a look at the calendar. There's a few events going on tonight, but none better than this one. Sorry to all those other events. Get, a, get your cat a sitter, lock the door, bring your jacket, <laughs> come down. You're making assumptions about our audience there, I know there, you Derby have Nerd. a cat. I know you have a cat. <laughs> Tunderkunt getting an opportunity with the star, or the heart, as I should say tonight. Again, as Betty Bomber, a longtime skater, an original skater in Toronto Roller Derby, skated for many years on CN Power as well. And wearing the star for Plaid Mafia, it's number 51, Dana, Dana Skullcrusher from the Niagara Roller Girls. She is out, but not your lead jammer, Tunderkunt. Coming in slowly. That's a lot of Plaid Mafia on the track right now. All four blockers there. Only one briefly, briefly on the track, and that's Box Ferry from uh, Toronto Roller Derby Skates as Joss Whelan at Tord. So big, penalty troubles for Team U Haul. Big pack advantage for Plaid Mafia meant that that jam had to be called with no points scored by Team U Haul. Plaid Mafia going into their bench now and expanding their rotation. Getcha Kinks. We used to skate quite a bit uh, as jammer, more so in the pack these days. Jamming for the first time this bout, it's I Heart Butts, who skates as uh, booty blocks a lot for the Orangeville Roller Girls. I Heart Butts. I Heart Butts. Wearing Kraken shorts. <laughs> and let's see if she can release the Kraken tonight. Only one, bl two blockers on the track right now for Team U-Haul. Getcha Kinks trying to work her way through that two wall, but nice defense from Sin. Finally through as your lead jammer, but right on her tail, I heart butts. It's going to be a jammer race to the pack. Three Plaid Mafia blockers, one Team U-Haul blocker. It's anybody's jam right now. I heart butts racing through on the inside, scooping up the points. Yeah. Nice work by that lone blocker that is Gacy McNally, a.k.a. Bear. Getcha Kings State. cutting her losses and calling off that jam. Nice work by our I Heart Butts. Not usually a jammer, right? No, not although she does pivot. Yeah. But again, this is a fun bout. You know, everyone can try every position. I'd like to try on those sparkly shorts again. <laughs> That's post game. That's at the yes. after party. I'm going to remember where I was when I discovered sparkly shorts. You can still join us at the after party at the Steady at 1051 Bloor Street West. Fantastic bar. $5 at the door or pay what you can. The study is at 1051 Bloor Street West between Dufferin and Dovercourt. And it's on the south side. South side. Annex, or sorry, that's uh, smashing good time from Hammer City, jamming against Queen Laquifa. Smashing good time through is your lead jammer. Some serious competition from these Team U-Haul blockers. Queen Laquifa almost makes it through. She gets a cut track call, which means a power jam for Smashing Good Time and Team U-Haul. Big opportunity here for U-Haul to extend their already impressive lead. They haven't quite been able to put away Plaid Mafia. This has been a very low scoring game so far as we're quickly through 17 minutes in, 59-16. Not a lot of points on the board. It's definitely been a blockers game so far and you have a lot of experience on this track right now. Skaters who are used to skating together. 
A nice uh, work from that Plaid Mafia line to keep ahead of the play. And that's not a line that skates together much at all. Queen Laquifa standing in the penalty box. So smashing good time calls. The jams, they can start with another power jam start. This time putting Annex with the heart on her helmet. 13 minutes to go. Four on four in the pack. Dinah Scorcha, G-Stringer, all of her clothes off, and Bear out there to work this power start. Nice defense, though, from the Mafia to slow things up, but Annex with a nice little pirouette gets through as your lead jammer. Queen Laquifa rejoining the action, coming up against a wall of orange, but some offensive help here from the Plaid Mafia. Now G-Stringer turning around to try and work some offense for Annex, who makes it through on her own her initial pass was already complete four point, or initial pass, just finishing up for Queen Laquifa. That offensive work that uh, Plaid Mafia did split them up, allowed Annex to just skate right through, scoop those four points. Another new jammer on the line, So Fear Me from uh, the home track GTA Roller Girls, getting an opportunity for Team U-Haul and up against Voss the Boss. Have you watched the uh, third season of Orange is the New Black yet? Only like back to back. Oh, yeah, nice. Yes, binge I, watching. I haven't gotten all the way through yet. So. Okay, well then I won't spoil yeah. it. No more spoilers. Hashtag Uno. <laughs> I don't even, that's, I did see them playing Uno already, but that's yes. really in the Okay, season. so then you're fine. Okay. So Fear Me is not your lead jammer. <laughs> She's heading right to the box. Uh, Voss the Boss, speaking of Orange is the New Black is your lead jammer. Voss the Boss. That's Lexicon skating as Voss the Boss. A nice burst of speed to power through a dead stopped three wall. Team G Litchfield! G Gilda was looking for a waitress whip there, I'm sure. <laughs> but too much speed from Voss the Boss did not allow that to happen. Five points up in the air for the Plaid Mafia. They're looking to make the most of this power jam situation, and no better person to do it than Lexicon. Nice defense, though, here from. Box Ferry, tear apart. Tunderkunt out, Tunderkunt out there as well. So Fear Me sneaking through, exits the box and just skates right through on the inside of that apex. And that's gonna force a call off from Voss, but Voss had already picked up four points, so 67-25, Plaid Mafia narrowing the lead ever so slightly here as we hit the 10 minute mark of the opening half of this U-Haul Brawl 2015 showdown between Team U-Haul in the orange and Plaid Mafia in the blue. Team U-Haul finally starting to gel as a team, sort of get their sea legs. Speaking of legs, Magillionaire jamming for the Plaid Mafia up against Dinah Squircha, formerly of Toronto Roller Derby, now of Montreal Roller Derby. Vast differences in experience here, and Squircha gets through on the inside. Little kick of the feet as she comes out, regains her balance. The Jillionaire, a lot of lateral track moves to try and separate the U -Haul, Team U-Haul. Oh, <laughs> Dinah Scorcha powering through that track using the outside in juke to get through a member of Team Canada, the only national team member here in this U-Haul brawl. Oh, that is how you get it done. Another three fingers in the air. Three more points for Team U-Haul. Smashing good time back on the line for Team U-Haul. Up against the littlest homo. <laughs> I love that. It's maybe good. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we need it. You'll need to uh, think of some new lyrics for that one. Absolutely. Just for the littlest homo. First, I had to look up the original lyrics because that was a long time ago that, that show was on. Ago. A long time ago. 50 points separating these teams with nine minutes left in the first half. Smashing good time. Best Clitty Smalls on one foot on the apex. She is your lead jammer. Littlest homo having a hard time getting through this pack. Yeah, nice defense here from the U-Haul brawl. And Tunderkun looking pretty good, working well with Box Ferry. Considering it's been a long time since Tunderkun has been on the track in a competitive situation, she doesn't yeah. look out of place at all. Absolutely not. Team U-Haul <laughs> really laying on the brakes right now, and controlling the jammer's speed. Smashing good time. Trying to avoid Clitty Smalls. She's been her biggest enemy on the track so far. Calling off that jam as she scoops her last of her five points. 
80 to 25, pretty substantial lead for Team U-Haul. Bring the ability to U-Haul to haul all those points away. <laughs> oh, and U-Haul deciding to take the timeout. That means I've got time to tell you about Great Spirit Designs. Clothing, exclamation mark. GreatSpiritDesigns.weebly.com. <laughs> I didn't know if I exclaimed it enough. No, you had to just Clothing. emphasize the exclamation. Yeah. Mm. So again, uh, coming up, thanks for tuning in to Layer9.ca. You can watch us live coming up on July 11th if you're looking for some derby, the Fresh and Furious Tournament. One of my favorite tournaments of the year because it's like an introduction to the future of the sport. Uh, last year, one of the great breakout skaters of that tournament was Le Petit Moore, mm -hmm. uh, Le Grand Noiseur. I'd never seen her skate before, and she kind of tore up this tournament for um, Les Bouches. Yep, yeah. absolutely. And you can be one of those hipsters that says, I knew about that skater before exactly. they were cool. I saw Le Petit Moore before she was drafted to Les Fidois and became a star at the Beast of the East this year. You can get autographs before all the fame goes to their head. That's right. And it's a great opportunity just for skaters to get their feet wet, get the feel of a tournament really early on in their skating career. All right, looks like we're ready to get back underway here. U-Haul Brawl's timeout has ended. They have two left on the board, each team. All right, they also have one official review left. The Plod Mafia burned theirs early. Oliver Klozoff wearing, uh, of course, Nasher the Smashers jersey. She's jamming for Team U-Haul. Kind of a loose start, but... Annex with a nice knockout to Gailey Copter. I, I heard Butts yeah. heading to the penalty box, winking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Gailey Copter still in a hard time now. Tear apart and Annex working really well at the front of that pack. Nice bridging from Dree Stringer, keeping them in play. Nice work, though, by Titmos on the inside to force her way through. Very good pack control here. Oh. Oliver Klozov having a heck of a time getting past Jildo and uh, Imye. Igwe. Igwe, sorry. Teammates now on CN Power. Igwe, it's all right. She's uh, new to Canadian Roller Derby. It just transferred here from the London Roller Girls. That's London, England. Oh, and a big hit from Tara Part forces Gailey Copter out of bounds. Gailey Copter spinning on one skate as she heads out. Oh, insubordination being called on uh, uh, Oliver Closeoff. That may, that's going to be a whole minute in the box, it looks like, then. Or was it just the one call? Hmm. Could have been a foul language, perhaps, or... Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe contact with the ref? I'll tell you in 30 seconds if that's a two-minute penalty or not. This jam comes to its conclusion, so it's going to be a power start for the Plaid Mafia. Which is exactly what they need right now. They are trailing uh, 55 points behind Team U-Haul, about 22 minutes into this game. So time to narrow the gap before the break comes on. We mentioned uh, some of the many leagues we have here. Uh, in this game, we've got, of course, I Heart Butts from Orangeville Roller Girls. Uh, Orangeville not represented in the first game, but represented here now. And uh, Susie Slammer from South Simcoe Rebel Rollers, uh, also the only representative from her league here tonight. Skates as Susie Scalper for the Rebel Rollers. Sure, if this is a timeout or not. We're looking at the uh, the period clock has been paused. Could be that the officials are reviewing. You can of course watch past clam slams on layer9.ca. They are archived. Don't do that now. No, we're not Wait right till now. This one's over. Now, no, although you do have the DVR feature as well, so you could pause and then just pick right back up where you left off. Yes. One of the great you features. You can pause to go find a sitter for your cat. <laughs> That's right. So that you can come down to the after party at the Steady <laughs> on Bloor Street West. The Steady is kind of uh, sent. It's, it's uh, after party central this weekend. I think the Dyke March after party tomorrow is going to be there as well. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking for Toronto Pride after party fun, go to the Steady just sometime this weekend. There you go. All the cool kids will be there. That's right. You don't want to be left out. Nobody seems to be left out here. This no. place has really gotten crowded, yep. especially for the second game. Everyone uh, finally getting off the gardener. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we And making their way here from their offices or whatever they do during the days. A rare Thursday night roller derby. Yes. So thank you for tuning in on this Thursday evening. We should probably let you know 
Well, some of our vendors, again, we've got 1234 Skateco here. They're skater-run, skater-owned business. Lose Your Pants, of course. The owner of that business, number 1234, is on the track right now, skating for the Plaid Mafia. Some of the other names that uh, you might not know, uh, Switch Hitter, number 828 in the Plaid Mafia, uh, known, of course, as Steffi Spitfire, skating for the Royal City Roller Girls. Um, we've mentioned Clitty Smalls is uh, known as Bigly Smalls, CN Power Skater from Toronto Roller Derby. And for Steffi Spitfire uh, at ECDX last weekend with the Brute Leggers. Oh. Who, and they uh, represented themselves well. Yeah, one and one on the weekend. Yep. I yeah, believe it was a loss to Salisbury in a win over yep. Connecticut, but don't quote me on that. Yep. I've been drinking. No, that's uh, exactly correct. And it was a pretty good loss to, uh, to Salisbury as well. Yeah. And they've debuted high in Division Three. The Jillionaire coming in low, looking to get lead while uh, Team U-Haul sits out in the box. Again, this power jam situation, very vital for Plaid Mafia right now, who are behind by quite a bit. Nice drag back from Full Dick on uh, Pepper Pot. Pepper Pot skates for GTA Roller Girls. Very briefly skated for Toronto Roller Derby many years ago for those astute, nerdy fans. Remember, she was drafted by the uh, Smoke City Bettys. So Fear Me taking Vigilionaire way back. Vigilionaire still yet to complete her initial pass, and that's going to be a cut track penalty. High fives between <laughs> Team U-Haul. They are happy about that. Pushed a f uh, just a toe stop out of bounds. But that's going to be now an opportunity for Team U-Haul to build their lead back up. Oliver Klozoff rejoining the fray. There's a cut track penalty to Clitty Smalls. She heads to the sin bin. Oliver Klozoff, your lead jammer for Team U-Haul. Defense at the front of the pack now. Get your kinks, full dick, and lose your pants. Trying to stay in front of the U-Haul offense. They've done a good job of that. Almost out of play, but... Uh, Oliver Klozoff knocked out on the inside, recycled back. She calls the jam after three points scored. Nice D from uh, Full Dick. Skates as Full Deck for Toronto Roller Derby's Gorgor -Gor Roller Girls. So 83-35, only three points picked up on that, uh, on that jam for Team U-Haul. Under five to go in the first period here. We've got a three-on-three -three pack right now. I'm noticing that uh, the scoreboard you're seeing is a little bit frozen, so we will do our best to keep you updated on that. Uh, the score now is 83-35. There's four and a half minutes to go here in the opening half. And Sin once again jamming, but a big hit from Fracture forces her out at turn two. Dinah squirts you with some nice defense as well on Dana Skullcrusher. Always a crowd pleaser. Lee Jammer has gone to Sin. Plaid Mafia forming up in the back. Clitty with a nice drag back. Sin just so powerful. Absolutely. But nice work here from the Plaid Mafia holding her in that pack. I heard butts the last line of defense for Team U-Haul, but Plaid Mafia jammer number 51, Dana Skullcrusher finally completes her initial pass. Three minutes, 30 seconds to go in the period. One minute left on the jam clock. Both jammers around the pack and scoring. It's going to be a big steal of four for Plaid Mafia at the end of that one. Dana Skullcrusher just sneaking through as Sin was calling it off. 4-3 advantage for the Mafia. Still down, though, by 51 points. 51 points, it's 90 to 39 in favor of Team U-Haul with three minutes left on the period clock. Still some time, I'm sure the Plaid Mafia would like to see a slightly tighter score going into half. If they, they consult with the Blundstone Brigade about maybe uh, yeah. closing that gap because they did a great job in the first bout. Smashing good time from Hammer City, your lead jammer jamming for the first time. Let me say it right, oh. Igwe on the Plaid Mafia racing out of that pack. Igwe, a very exciting pickup for Toronto Roller Derby. It'll be interesting to see how she affects uh, their yeah. roster this season. Yeah, CN Power coming off of a road trip last weekend. They went one and one with wins over Naptown, a loss to the Ohio Roller Girls. Uh, this is really coming up. This is the uh, last weekend of play for the WFTDA 
teams jockeying for a playoff position. It's going to be a big weekend. Some big showdowns happening this weekend. Absolutely. And then we're all going to be on the edge of our seat to find out where everyone's going to be seated. And a lot of it will be on WFTDA TV. They have a full slate of games lined up for this weekend. So you can just keep watching Roller Derby all weekend. If you've got air conditioning and you've got Wi-Fi, you're set. Yeah. Of course, if you're in Toronto, that, that will happen after you've spent a day doing uh, some Pride Toronto festivities. Voss the Boss is your lead jammer for the Plaid Mafia as they try to narrow the gap here with under two minutes to go in the first half. Smashing good time, sitting it out in the sin bin. Voss the Boss has one more blocker to best to complete her scoring pass, and she does. Five points in the air. So Plaid Mafia doing exactly what they wanted to do, and that's narrowing this gap just a little bit. Smashing good time, coming back out of the penalty box. Clitty Smalls dragging her all the way back. Nice bridging from Full Dick. If anyone can uh, stop this uh, Plaid Mafia momentum, it's smashing good time. She's had a great bout so far. Very confident on the track. Very effective as a jammer. Yeah, very impressed with the Hammer City skaters so far this evening. Voss the Boss, five more points. Plaid Mafia now 49. Big pack advantage for Team U-Haul on the track right now. Only two Plaid Mafia blockers. Easy work for smashing good time. She picks up an another pass. That's going to do it, though. Voss picked up three on that last pass, so 92-52. It's a 40-point lead. The gap has been narrowed. Absolutely. A 13-point jam for Plaid Mafia. Last jam of the half right now. Getcha Kinks jamming for the Plaid Mafia up against. Is that led to Potimor? Potimor, yep. I believe so. Igwe being thrown the pivot uh, penny at the last second. And this will be the final jam of the opening half of the second game of the 2015 U-Haul Brawl. Littlest Homo with a nice knockout on Petit Moore will force her back. Getcha Kinks, though, not having much luck against a tight four wall of U-Haul Brawl. Some brawl offensive blockers. help from Lose Your Pants. Not really enough to get Getcha Kinks out yet, but tear apart. Following her out of the pack, she leaves the engagement zone, picks up lead jammer. Let Petit Moore hot on her heels. Yeah, Petit Moore is through and making up track very quickly, so I think it's going to be a quick one pass and done for the Plod Mafia, but ending this half with a little bit of momentum as Getcha Kinks calls it off. Not before giving up one, though, to the Petit Moore, as you see her getting up off the track. Your score going into halftime, 93 for Team U-Haul, 56 for the Plaid Mafia. Uh, still several timeouts left for each team. And uh, there's going to be some talk in the change room. There's going to be some reassessing. We have no idea how this second half is going to go, especially based on last uh, the last bout. That's right. You saw a massive comeback at the very end of the last game, so don't leave yet. This one is far from being done. We've got a 10-minute break coming up at halftime. I'm the Derby Nerd. <laughs> and I am Pink Slaminade. See you in nine <laughs> minutes.
All right, Roller Derby fans, welcome back to the 2015 U-Haul Brawl live from Ted Reeve Arena, a co-event put on by Toronto Roller Derby and the GTA Roller Girls. I'm oh, I'm Pink's Lemonade. Yes, and I'm the Derby Nerd. That's right. The one and only. Yeah. And our uh, clock slash scoreboard has caught up to reality. It is 93 to 56 going to the second half, and there yes. is your first whistle. Annex for Team U-Haul jamming against. That's Gailey Gailey Copter Copter. for the Plaid Mafia. And Annex picks up your lead jammer status. Gailey Copter being dragged all the way back by Sofirmi and Tunderkunt. Team U-Haul coming into the second half, just like they have this whole game on top and uh, with a fire in their belly. And Annex, oh, Annex getting called. Lifted her inside foot, leaving her one-in-play foot on the track. Tries to call a jam off, and Senior Wiener is having none of it. This is going to be a two-minute jam. Gailey Copter unopposed on the track. Just like we said, don't count out the Plaid Mafia. Suddenly, we're opening up the second half with a full two-minute jam, and they have a power jam opportunity. Although, I don't believe Gailey Copter's even completed her initial pass yet. No, she will have a chance to become lead if she can get around this last team. I think Annex, though, was called lead before her penalty. Bef- oh, you know what? She was on wasn't a scoring she? pass, wasn't yeah, she? that's right. Wake up, Derby nerd. <laughs> God, God, Derby nerd sucks. Ugh, the worst. <laughs> Tinderkunt and Tara Part, old CN Power partners now, working over Galeycopter's gates for Toronto Roller Derby's Bay Street Bruisers. Annex rejoins the fray, could almost completes her scoring pass, doesn't want to get cut, uh, sorry, have a cut track again. She's recycled all the way to the back. Full Playing dick. it safe. Yep, dragging her back. Gailey right. Copter. Oh, no, we've got a, a panty pass to... Voss the Boss. Voss the Boss. Like, you want to say Lexicon, but that's not her name tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Lexicon also skates for the Bay Street Bruisers. They were just on the road, too down through Middle America in Indianapolis and Columbus along with CN Power went one and one The Bay Street Boozers have had a great season so far. Yeah. Really good roster put together this year. And that's going to end with four points in the air for Team U-Haul, three points in the air for the Plaid Mafia, but Plaid Mafia comes out on top of that jam with seven points total. Team U-Haul uh, clears the century mark, 101 to 63. Just realize if I'm Pink's Lemonade, then I'm a way better derby skater than uh, I was an hour ago. Absolutely. Nice. It's that it's that lanky body of yours. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to. We have I have a game in a couple weeks, right? You do. <laughs> nice. So you better train. <laughs> You're going to ready. Kingston soon. <laughs> Kingston. Oh, Kingston. Those, those girls are scary. Yes, they are. <laughs> Smashing good time is your lead jammer for Team U-Haul. She's coming in fairly hot into that plaid wall, being brought back by Queen Laquifa. No Kingston skaters in this game, but we saw two in the earlier game, Dyke Spice and Flaming Hips. Two skaters I don't want to be hit on. Hit by, I should say. <laughs> you definitely want to be hit well, on can, by them. Yeah, that's fine. It's U-Haul Brawl. Anything goes. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, the same pair up we saw in this first half, Getcha Kinks up against I Hard Butts. On the jammer line, two very strong jammers uh, who are normally blockers. Yeah, that's right. Again, uh, no rules. Hashtag you help all. <laughs> Getcha Kinks began her career on this very track here, skating for the GTA Roller Girls. And now at the front of that pack, working with Box Ferry. Pepper Pot, so fear me, comes in with a big hit too. And that nice. it looks like a track cut for I Heart Butts oh. means it's going to be a power jam for the Plaid Mafia. Again, here's a chance for them to close up this gap, but some fantastic defense here from Team U-Haul. Yeah, really nice defense led by uh, Le Petit Moore, the pivot, the Box Ferry, and so fear me all with some nice hits. But eventually Getcha Kinks gets through and is your lead jammer. So Plaid Mafia now with lead jam on this power jam. And they do have one skater trapped Old school roller derby, reset that pack. And Lady Gaga, for some reason, Jildo is actually bridging when she could have just dropped back and reformed the pack at the back. Maybe it's so old school that skaters have forgotten how to trap. I mean, I see what (laughs) you're trying to do. I see what you're (laughs) trying to do, but there seems to be some miscommunication between uh, one half of the team and the other, what what, uh, play they're trying now. (laughs) Yeah. 
Panty stash here from I Heart Butts. Coming out of the box, that's a common tactic. But uh, La Batimor, the pivot, way behind her. So not a good opportunity for a pass right now. And you know, of course, these are all-star teams. They're not teams that play together regularly, so they don't have their own sort of internal default strategies to fall back on. Well, and one thing I was told at halftime, it makes it pretty hard when you're all wearing other, everybody else's shirts. Yes. Uh, and they're calling Nasher, 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 and Nasher doesn't even have skates on. <laughs> It's hard enough remembering to answer to your derby name, let alone your alternate derby name, let alone <laughs> someone else's alternate, alternate derby, derby name. name. And there are a few skaters with three names on the track tonight as well. I'm having a hard time remembering that I'm a successful uh, blog personality and uh, internet superhero. Yeah, and I'm terrified that I have to play a roller derby game in exactly. a couple weeks. It's a lot of responsibility on my shoulders right now. <laughs> Actually, the Derby Nerd's only roller derby, regulation roller derby game was played on this track as well. I recall doing my fresh meet with the Derby Nerd. Oh, yeah. And uh, I could see even now, even then, his potential. Yeah. My potential, I yes, mean, my potential. potential. Hasn't played out as well on the track. <laughs> <laughs> Lee right. Jammer is. What's sin, going on? What are the real skaters doing here? Uh, definitely a successful jammer this game. A force on the track. A penny stash there from Voss the Boss. She's putting it back on her helmet as she exits the pack. And a nice race oh, up the wow. outside from Sin. She calls that jam. Unbelievable game from Sin. Just saw that that pack was spread out and uh, nicely moved across the track to Just take advantage of those gaps. She's been a real asset to uh, Team Orange in this game. You know, I like tonight, even the referees are skating, some of them anyway, some of the referees and NSOs under uh, alternate names. Annie Philactic, our outside pack ref for both these games, skating as Pack is Queer. Absolutely. A great name. Uh, Scara Fawcett, one of our NSOs running the penalty box, uh, working tonight as Polly Pocket. So even the officials getting into the, uh, the spirit of things. Who says officials have no fun? Uh, come on. They wear pink, <laughs> which is the best color, as you know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Annex is your lead jammer for Team U-Haul, having a great second half, just like their first half. But uh, Vigilionaire racing out. It's going to be a short jam for Annex of Tri-City. Gallicopter was trapped. Did a nice job of getting away from the blocking of Le Petit Moore to get back in the pack. And it's going to make Annex work for a couple points here. Nice little spin from Annex there on the first straightaway to pick up at least two. Tyler Swift, though, calling the penalty. And I think that's what Senor Wiener was waiting for to, to check on. Did you see what that call was? Forearm? Or uh, a cutting. Cutting. Yep. And uh, I think Senior Wiener is waiting to see if that happened and before he assessed the two points for Annex before that cut. I Means Getcha King is going to be unopposed on the jammer line for the Plaid Mafia. Again, a great opportunity for them, but Team u has done a great job of killing these power jams for Plaid Mafia and really uh, wasting the clock getting their jammers out of the box. Some experienced blockers out there now, but Getcha Kinks just working that pack so well. Getting in there strong, using her shoulders to break them apart through as your lead jammer. A big opportunity here with all four of her blockers to work the offense. Fracturing oh. and full dick with a nice little inside out sweep, but nice resetting led by Tara Park. And again, Team uh, Plaid Mafia really not sure if they want to hold pack or if they want to, you know, come in for the sweep. And Fracture now finally getting everyone in, in line and yelling pack back. And dropping back. And X taking advantage of that confusion. She pushes uh, Fracture and Plitty Smalls out of play. Yeah, smart re-entry from NX out of the penalty box. Slows things down. Only nine points on the power jam for the Plaid Mafia. They are within 34 points. Closest we've seen it in quite a while. So still within reach. They're definitely having a better second half than their first half. And again, it, these All-Star games you need to gel as a team. You need to all get on the same page. You're learning not only the other team, but you're learning each other. All right, back now underway. Petit Moore is your pivot, as you see, leading that Team U-Haul defense at the front of the pack. Voss, the boss, trying to work her way through it. Smashing good time, meanwhile, having a hard time at the back of the pack as well. Again, some great teamwork like we've seen all game from Team U-Haul. Jildo heading to the box. Plaid Mafia splitting up on the track. So it's going to be an elbow call for I Heart Butts. 
But Voss the Boss still has to be recycled to the back. Smash a good time, picking up a five-point Grand Slam. Dinah Scorcha and Le Petit Mornau, league mates anyway at Montreal Roller Derby, working really well together in that pack. Bear also the last line of defense. Got a penny pass to uh, Queen Laquifa. It's now your jammer for Plaid Mafia. Hoping to stem the flow from smashing good time. She calls the jam, still picks up two points. Big hit there to close the door, shut things down. Team U-Haul scoring seven points on that one, and more importantly, perhaps almost wasting a full two-minute jam. So 19 and a half minutes to go when things get underway here. 41 points is the difference. Tundercun getting another opportunity with the star, or the heart. The heart. On the helmet. It's not a star. The beating heart <laughs> for U-Haul. Speaking of which, there's some great U-Haul uh, brawl merch. It's maybe your only chance to get some of these t-shirts. The Glitterati, the Plaid Mafia. Oh, a cut track call to Plaid Mafia's jammer, number 51. That's... Tindergun had taken Tannis. off the helmet, though, her helmet cover. And now trying to put it back on, but way at the back of the pack, and Clitty Smalls making her pay. Vigilionaire, the pivot getting involved as well with the defense. Dana Skullcrusher sitting it out in the penalty box. Tundrakun debating a panty pass. You can see her making that eye contact with Sin. She's not sure if she wants help or if she wants to get rid of that heart. A hard time, nonetheless. Clitty Smalls, last line of defense. Finally, Tundrakun is through. Lead jammer status for the skater formerly known as Betty Bomber. You can tell that this uh, Toronto crowd misses her. There's a big cheer just now when she got out. She got lead jammer. She's calling off the jam, putting four points up on the board for Team U-Haul. Yeah, rare opportunity to see Tinder Kunt, Betty Bomber, back on the track. In the flesh. In the flesh. NX, can I be on the jam line for Team U-Haul? Getcha Kinks for the Plaid Mafia 4-3 pack advantage. No, 4-4 four, four in the pack. Things are all evened up. The penalty box gloriously empty. Gloriously. We've got 45 points now separating these teams. Again, Team U-Haul trying to keep it comfortable, trying to keep it safe. Annex now working against Fracture and Full Dick. Yaley Copper getting up to the front of the pack now, going chest to chest. Annex and Fracture teammates yeah. on the Tri-City Thunder. But opponents in this pickup game. Tri City Thunder, Thunder excitedly holding on to one of the final playoff spots in the D1 right now. Wow, and Annex just powering Ooh. her way through Susie Slammer. It looks like she's going to be called in a low block, though, on Getcha Kinks. Things getting a little sloppy in the back of this pack. Susie Slammer at the same time being sent to the penalty box as well. Bad Mafia making good use of this power jam. Gadget Kings finally getting out of the engagement zone, finishing her initial pass. It's going to be a two-minute jam. One minute left. Only two blockers on the track for the U-Haul brawl. It's Dinah Scorcher, though, in Bear. Fracture with a big hit forces Bear to the inside. Ooh, but Fracture's going to head to the box for that. Annex is standing as Getcha Kings rounds the corner. Enters in in front and races through the pack. Not a lot of blue uh, shirts out here. Full Dick heading to the penalty box. 2-2 two -two in the pack. It's a micro pack. It's a fanny pack. <laughs> yeah, cannot get any smaller pack. than this. Literally, the rules won't allow it. No. <laughs> Susie Slammer going to put a big hit on Annex, who manages to evade it and get through for four more points. Both jammers scoring 20 seconds to go in this jam. Getcha Kinks also putting four on the board. Hearing even more whistles as wow. we see another blocker head to the box. That's Box Ferry, a.k.a. Joss Whelan. Nice oh, teamwork fracture. here from Galeycopter and Fracture. That's a great pairing. Fracture, terrifying on the track. Fracture is, she's not even human, really. <laughs> Extraordinarily an sent here to destroy us. Uh, yeah, very fit athlete, part of uh, a great resurgent Thunder team this season. 
really, I don't think anyone expected them to be competing for a D1 playoff spot this year. No, you know, they they really suffered a lot of losses on their on their roster. Yeah, kind of. But a, they've rebuilt so quickly. Yeah, a, a completely new jammer rotation for the Thunder, and uh, it's been a very successful one. Built a lot from transfers that that helped a lot. Absolutely, Crazy Squirrel uh, yeah. being a great addition to that team. Yep, and um, uh, Honey Badger. Honey well Badger. Oh my gosh, yes. And Edex, who we're watching in this game tonight, also part of that jammer rotation. So we're at the midway point of the second half. Team U-Haul has been leading pretty much the whole way, and they've got a, a I don't know, I don't want to call it comfortable. 39 points, not really that comfortable no. a lead. Not considering, you know, two very strong rosters here, and it just kind of comes down to a little bit of luck, a little bit of teamwork, you know, which players gel together and which players don't, because very yeah. strong players on both sides here. Yeah. And it looks like things are going to start off as a power jam for the Plaid Mafia. Christy Skelton skating as Queen Laquifa will be the jammer. Pivot oh, line start, mind, just like in the old a, yeah. days. Just like in the old days. And by old days, we mean 2009. Yeah, so 2009. <laughs> Smashing good time. Looking to do some jammer on jammer action against Queen Laquifa. Changes course. It works out in Plaid Mafia's favor. Queen Laquifa is your lead jammer. Smashing good time. Who's had a lot of success having not much so far on this jam. Igway and Full Dick doing a good job of holding her back, but she is through in her initial pass. Nice, easy inside pass for four for Queen Laquifa. Team U-Haul so preoccupied with their offense, they don't notice Queen Laquifa coming up, sweeping through. Still two blockers in the box for Team U-Haul. Plaid Mafia reaches the century mark, 36 points separating these teams, less than 15 minutes to go. Well, let me tell you, Team U-Haul, if they watch the first game, they know they're in a dangerous position right now because this is about the lead at the midway point of the second half that... Um, that uh, that was in the first game. Yes. Glitterazzi. Well, Glitterazzi was leading. Sorry. And as the pressure <laughs> mounts, you see, you know, a lot more penalties happening here for Team U-Haul. So if they lose their cool, they could lose this game, definitely. And Vigilionaire with a nice little move to get through as your lead jammer. So Plaid Mafia now has lead jammer status and opportunity to narrow this oh, gap even more. And a successful apex, apex jump. jump. Finishes oh. on one foot. The crowd is loving it. Mm -hmm. Loving it. Jillionaire is just getting warmed up. This is her second derby game, fourth half of roller derby tonight. And she is not slowing down and injecting a lot of <laughs> momentum, a lot of positive vibes to the Plaid Mafia. Their bench is all smiles right now. They know that this is within reach. 32 points, that's it. On the jam line for the Plaid Mafia as they try to keep this comeback going is, I believe, Dana Skullcrusher. Mm -hmm. And Le Petit Ma from Montreal Roller Derby in the pink sparkle shorts. Again, my favorite part of the whole evening. Pink <laughs> sparkle shorts. There's a lot of pink... Pink <laughs> sparkle shorts! Yeah. This is actually the only pair of pink sparkle shorts, but we've yes. definitely seen some sparkle shorts. And there's only one fracture, <sighs> and I'm so happy because she is dangerous, oh, yeah. but not able to hold back Le Petit Ma. She crosses on the outside of turn one. She's your lead jammer. Dana Skullcrusher looking a little frustrated. Yeah. She's getting well acquainted with Dinah Scorcha and tear apart on this jam. A wild pass for Le Petit Moore, who manages to get through that j pack, picks up all five points. Le Petit Moore on her second scoring pass now. Dana Skullcrusher yet to escape the pack. Oh, and there's Le Petit oh. Moore again with another easy pass. Fracture trying to calm her pack down. As Team U-Haul putting Plaid Mafia back in their place right now. Ten points already on the board in this jam. Power jam for Orange. Nice footwork here from La Patima. Nice work, though, from Getcha Kinks. Knock her out of bounds. Slow her up. The littlest homo now jumping in on the one-on-one -on -one defense, and that's going to force a call off. The littlest mo, uh, homo, interesting matchup against that, but yeah. so much shorter than her, but really able to keep her under control, force that call off. Yeah, she's a, a great player, littlest homo, having a great, had a great season for Chicks Ahoy. She uh, is kind of a triple threat for that team, blocks, pivots, jams. Can definitely see it in this game, very confident. Annex will be back on the line for Team U-Haul, nursing this lead now with a power start opportunity as Dana Skullcrusher is standing in the box, so it'll be very brief. 
And X has had oh. some penalty trouble. As long as she can stay out of the box, she's really going to widen this lead. It's already 46 points with Team U-Haul having lead jammer status again. Dana Skullcrusher back on the track, trying to work her way through that pack as Annex is already scoring. Full Dick trying to work the defense, but Annex, as you three see coming through the front of that pack, has picked up four more points for Team U-Haul. Team U-Haul's lead has spread to 50 points now, and the jam's not over yet. Annex coming in fast into this pack. Edged Call. out by Gailey Copter, calls the jam with two points. Nice call off from Annex. Team U-Haul right back on the line, ready to go. Clitty Smalls, Igwe, Lose Your Daddy, and Voss the Boss will be on the line for the Plaid Mafia. Vigilionaire back on the jam line. Thank you for tuning in to Layer9.ca, the 2015 U-Haul Brawl. Pink Slaminade, Derby Nerd on the mics. Ten minutes to go in the second game. 156 to 104 now, and 10 seconds into this jam. Not clear who's going to be lead. Some very strong locking formations right now, but Vigilionaire is recycled to the back. Smashing Good Time is in the front. She's your lead jammer. Besting Clitty Smalls, who runs back to do offense. Seeing a panty stash. And I believe the pass has been made so quickly, though, I barely even saw it. But Voss the Boss has the star in her hand. Voss the Boss of Agilinaire has been trading back the star back and forth throughout this game. Both have been strong jammers for the Plaid Mafia. Smashing good time. Now looking to pick up some points. Voss the Boss still has not escaped the pack and has not put on the panty, so <laughs> no. she could give it back. Great defense from both teams here. Finally, Voss the Boss may have found a lane, but Dinah Scorchia quickly closed it up. But Voss works her way through. Initial pass complete. Smash a good time calls the jam. Four more points on the board for Team U-Haul. That's going to bring up to 165 to 104. That's a 61-point spread. Not looking good. Nine minutes left in the game. It is not, but Plaid Mafia trying to mix things up. Igwe getting the star once again, or the, the heart. I guess it's a heart, or is that still the clam? I think that might be a clam from is the old clam? Uh, clam Slam days. It may be. Up against Igwe on the jammer line. Looks like it's Sin for the U-Haul, Team U-Haul. Both tall, strong players. Yeah, Sin. Wow, nice work against the three wall of blockers to get through, but Igwe also threw as well. She's got some track to make up though, but a half a track almost. Team U-Haul trying to call the shots as their jammer approaches the pack. Nice defensive position from Plod Moffey to stay ahead of the game, but two points nonetheless given up at the end of that jam. Very well-timed call off by Team U-Haul as Igwe approached the back of that pack. Team U-Haul's blockers were pretty spread out. There was a lot of discussion about the uh, name change coming up to this event. It wasn't originally planned. There had been discussion to change the name uh, eventually, but it, it wasn't planned for this year. But uh, the organizers, I think, kind of smartly decided that it was time to change the name. And some people were asking me uh, between game one and game two about the anthem. And so in mm. case you weren't aware at home, we, for, we decided to forego the anthems this year just because there's a lot of political baggage with the LGBTQ community and s national governments. So yeah. it's not about the countries you're from. It's just about who you are and having fun and roll the derby. So. Yeah, and uh, the name change too, tying into that, they've attempted to make this event and this game as inclusive as they possibly can, which I think... Uh, given the situation is is what we should be striving for. I think this event's really going to evolve over time. Uh, perhaps even include some male roller derby skaters yeah. as, uh, as that uh, niche becomes a little more popular. I wouldn't be surprised at all. But tonight, it is the Team U-Haul versus Plaid Mafia. Now that is, the, I guess, the one disadvantage of changing the name at the last minute is that suddenly Team U-Haul seems like the uh, the star team here. Uh, maybe that's what's inspired them to take the lead tonight. But, you in know, this game. that's that's a, the position the clam diggers held for yeah, so long, right. though, right? Yes. They kind of got that advantage as well. Well, originally the idea was the clam diggers would take on Vigine Regime Canada, and I believe in the first 
Clam Slam, the diggers were Toronto skaters, and then the Regime Regime Canada was from outside of the league. Yes. Uh, and uh, that's the way that, that that started. It obviously became much more mixed, I think, within a year. Well, I mean, once, once this idea took hold, who wouldn't love this? Yeah. People come from all over to participate in this event. And it Toronto, really is so fun. And Toronto Pride, one of the more famous, I think, Pride events uh, in the world, really. Toronto um, does Pride really well. It does. It does. If you haven't been here for a Pride weekend, uh, do yourself a favor and get down here. Big hit from I Heart Butts against Vajillionaire. She's been very successful so far, but is being recycled to the very back by Box Queen. Yeah. It's bear jamming. Some gear adjustment here from the Team U-Haul jammer, Gacy McNally, which allows Vajillionaire to become lead. Gacy McNally looking very frustrated, very fed up. Penny pass now to number 917. That's, That's Pepper, Pepper Pot. Pot. Vajillionaire, though, threw for five. The bench telling her to go for more. And here is the Plaid Mafia comeback now as we near the five-minute mark of this U-Haul brawl. One each in the penalty box. Both standing, G-Stringer now back on the track, U -Haul uh, Team U-Haul with the full pack. Penny pass successfully completed. Pepper Pot approaches the pack, so Vajillionaire calls it off. Is not able to score in that pass. Your score now 171 to 107. Lead has widened considerably to 63. Oh, a couple points being added there at the very end 62. for the Platte Mafia. And under five minutes to go. So the Plaid Mafia needs to start their comeback right about now, I would yes. say. Yes. And go. <laughs> Let's see what they can do. There it is. Not she heard bad. us. Yeah, nice job. Gailey Copter. Sin makes it out of the pack, adjusting her wrist guard as she goes. Gailey Copter, of course, an experienced jammer. Just the person to pick up some momentum for the Plaid Mafia. Calls the jam just in time. No points for Team U-Haul in that jam. Four for Plaid Mafia. The crowd approves. The crowd does definitely improve. <laughs> Remains five on five. Penalty box is empty. It's going to be Dinah Squircha for Team U-Haul. And is that Jildo? That's Jildo. Yeah. Old school toward matchup. Hashtag toward matchup. <laughs> Interesting story about Jildo is she actually tried to play roller derby before she was old enough to play roller derby back in 2008. They didn't let her play. You mean like in the movie Whip It? Yeah. She uh, did a full-on Whip It? And there was no junior derby, though, at the time for her to start, so she actually just had to wait before being drafted by the Gorgo Roller Girls way back in 2008. What an age. Dinah Squirch is your lead jammer for Team U-Haul. Here she comes, oh. lead inside, jumps <laughs> over. Number 52 trying to hold her back. Jildo oh, wow. still stuck in the pack. Mentioned earlier, Dinah Scorcha, member of Team Canada. Oh, Dinah for president. Full deck has left the track. We'll monitor that situation as the game goes on, holding her ear. Oh, Dinah Scorcha heading to the penalty box. He's to say power jam for Jildo and the Plaid Mafia. Jildo being recycled to the back of the pack, still stuck on her initial pass. Hasn't even been an attempt at a star pass yet, but they may want to try just to take advantage of this opportunity. They do have Queen Laquifa oh. who, oh! Nice little hop yeah. over tear apart. Means Jildo finally, oh, sorry, that was a scoring pass, five points in the air. Queen Laquifa is the pivot if a pass is needed, but some nice footwork from uh, Jildo. She is one of the here. smoother skating skaters in Toronto Roller Derby. It's very true. Dinah oh. Hurtcher racing oh, back into the pack at full steam. That pass completed in mere seconds. Talked a little bit about terrifying skaters early on. Dinah Scorcha definitely falls into that category. She's haunted a few of my nightmares. Oh, oh there it is. Spinorama, just to add to the power, there's the finesse. Absolute artwork. Poor Jildo, really yeah. struggling in this pack right now. This was a power jam. Unfortunately, Jildo did not have lead jammer status, so it's gone the full two, and Dinah Scorch is going to end up outscoring her on this one, and this may seal the deal for Team U-Haul. Two more points each in the air. 
That was a 16-7 jam in favor of Team U-Haul. Less than two minutes left on the period clock. 187 to 120. Wow. Huge jam from Dinah Scorcha. Getting some love on the bench as she headed back. Plaid Mafia with a bit of momentum coming out of halftime, but Team U-Haul has definitely shut that down. Excuse me. Definitely shut that down and come out even stronger. I heart butts wearing the heart for Team U-Haul up against, looks like that's uh, Voss the Boss from Plaid Mafia. Smashing good time heading to the penalty box. Slight pack disadvantage now for Team U-Haul. I heard Butts just trying to push through that very solid wall of blue. That means Voss the Boss is going to be your lead jammer for the Plaid Mafia. And we have a panty pass attempt from I heart Butts. But she can't stay on the no. track long enough. Must pass on the track. Oh, and a Voss the Boss with a nice sneaky pass for five points. Under a minute to go, though. It may be too, long, too late for this Plaid Mafia comeback. Good I, for them to at least win the last jam, though. Even yeah. if they can't win the bow, Voss the Boss oh. has worked really hard this game. She's definitely helping raise the energy in this, in this building. Well, we will go to the jam clock, which will give her an extra 30 seconds or so to work with. But to make up 57 points would uh, be literally miraculous. It would actually be miraculous. It would be a miracle. There would be news stories. Yes. There would be books. There would be songs written. Yeah, sainthood would be conferred on someone. Poems, ballads, commemorative <laughs> t-shirts, limited edition dinner plates. Pepper Pot now wearing the heart I want for one Team U-Haul. <laughs> The miraculous 57-point, 30-second jam. Oh, and it's a cut track penalty to Team U-Haul. Again, some great momentum here for the Plaid Mafia now on a power jam. Voss the Voss is still lead jammer with 18 seconds left on the jam clock. Nice bridge back, though, from Team U-Haul. Just trying to kill the final 10 seconds now. And they can uh, lock up the victory here at the 2015 U-Haul Brawl. I heard Butts showing her strength as a blocker against Voss the Boss. And as Voss the Boss is sent to the box, the jam time expires. Your score, 187, Team U-Haul to 130, Plaid Mafia. And we will wait for an official final. But certainly Team U-Haul will be victorious here at another successful U-Haul brawl. It's sort of fitting. Yeah. They're named after the event. They are. We are, uh, the fans have lined the track despite the fact that, and there it is, it is an official final now. 187 to 134, U-Haul, Team U-Haul over the Plaid Mafia here at the 2015 U-Haul Brawl. This has been the U-Haul Brawl for the first time, yep. uh, hosted by Toronto Roller Derby and GTA Roller Derby. We'd like to thank all the referees, the non-skating officials, all the volunteers who made tonight possible, and all these beautiful, fantastic people who came out to skate and show off their skills. Yeah, big thanks to uh, our camera crew tonight too. Um, uh, Ann Gard and Candy Sass working the cameras here tonight. And of course, Layer 9 himself. Who made the stream possible. Yeah, and he, uh, he is even on the switching tonight. Not only our technical producer, but also the uh, game producer of the action tonight. So big thanks, of course, to Layer 9. Of course, we've got Jack Salatopus, yep. Mr. Whistler, and Bill Murray, who did the house call. We made things so electric in this building. Yep. And for you, for tuning in. Yeah, at thank home you. With your cat. Yeah, exactly. I know you have a cat. <laughs> and if you are in Toronto and you do want to uh, take part in this action and uh, you missed the game, you can come down to the Steady at 1051 Bloor Street West, uh, just between Dufferin and Dover Court on the south side. A fine establishment with fine beverages. And that's where all the cool kids will be. That is where all the cool kids will be. For the last hour or so, I've been the Derby Nerd. Yeah, and I've been uh, Pink's Lemonade. And thank you for joining us yes. here at Ted Viverina. And thank you for tuning in to Layer9.ca.